we're going to talk about Peacemaker. Yay. We're going to talk about Peacemaker. Uh, did you enjoy the finale? I, I just want to get your first impression first off. Did you enjoy the finale? I kind of did. I did too, mm-hmm. a lot. There's some weird messaging at the end that I got a huge kick out of that Hannah Claire is going to love my commentary on. Mm-hmm. But let's just go through it. So this was the season finale. This was written and directed by James Gunn. So uh, it was... Can an, I give you my one comment about James Gunn? Yes. I've been waiting for all these episodes yes. that you have talked about this. <laughs> Say James it. Gunn is the brother brother of Sean Gunn, who is in Gilmore Girls. There Aww. you go. All roads lead back to this show. She loves Gilmore Girls. Mm-hmm. She does. So this before my birthday, you guys will do a Gilmore Girls episode. We could do that. Oh my god, we should have Dane. Who's who? Stop trying to make Dane come on to the episodes that I'm on. Leave her alone. Leave Dane alone. Am I not enough for you, Miracle? I love you. <laughs> okay, so um, in this episode, basically the team's going on their way to take out the magic cow that produces the uh, elixir that keeps the butterflies I'm still alive. Out by it. Uh, what? I'm still grossed out by it. It, it's just, so it looks gross. like it just looks like honey. Um, uh, so the team's going out there. Um, there's a, a funny conversation between Adebayo and Chris, and he's still pissed at her as he should be because she betrayed him. Mm-hmm. It says uh, it's an incredibly emotional. It says I just want to get started here for the top of the article, um, and they just they talk about what happens here. It says unfortunately, for, uh, Peacemaker's first season has reached its conclusion, fresh off the news of a season two renewal. That's what I wanted to cover first. It is getting a season two. Nice. Which I wonder if when they got the season two, they made sure that Harcourt served because she gets a fantastic scene here mm-hmm. but um the whole scene is they they go to this farm where this cow which is really just a gigantic moth type thing you know what it reminds me of have you seen the movie monsters versus aliens no oh my god it's a dreamworks original animation movie okay um and basically they have a big mo- like weird caterpillar looking bug uh, and yeah, it they, reminds they describe me of that. It as a cat- it's like, he's like it's a caterpillar the size of the empire state it building. reminds me of that but at least i can watch monsters versus aliens butterfly bug yes because it looks more appealing than this thing yes this thing it's so disgusting. gross so it says project butterfly starts to live up to its name with the death of Mern and chris's distrust of the team there's an air of uncertainty mainly between adebayo and peacemaker uh, John uh, Daniel Brooks and John Cena display incredible amounts of chemistry as Adebayo continues to try to apologize. Actually, I think she's at her most annoying when she's trying to apologize. She's yeah. a great character, but she keeps trying. And it's You're like, very, girl, be an empowered woman. Don't uh, apologize for things. Chris and Adrian continually interrupt her with farting noises. Moreover, it's hilarious. Uh, of course, you would love that scene. <laughs> it's so y- dumb. You, uh, it says it's hilarious, but it's layered in heartbreak for Peacemaker as Adebayo tries to comfort Chris uh, as a vow to kill only for peace. Peacemaker is faced with introspection. Yes, yet again the team arrives at the ranch with Waller unable to send back up to the team she there's a really funny scene where he says mm-hmm. she goes can you send the Justice League <laughs> and she says no yeah uh, uh, and he says uh, and then he made they're, they're talking about putting a, a helmet somewhere he's like uh, shooting a helmet onto the roof of this building he says like Green Arrow and he says Green Arrow goes to brony conventions um, <laughs> the, maybe my, I can see that my favorite joke throughout this, ser- this entire series has been Peacemaker coming up with ridiculous stories about what the other members of the justice league do aquaman like sleeps with fishes so it says uh uh what was it she oh also autobi not autobi uh harcourt calls uh peacemaker schwarza never which is (laughs) uh i i I giggle i literally giggled out loud when that happens uh and what he does best in this episode is blend uh humor with tragedy Mm -hmm. uh there is a fantastic scene where basically they all attack this ranch full of i guess butterflies and it's ultra violent gory and extremely uh disconcerting if you're not ready for something like that heads getting chopped off knives going through the middle of somebody's head and splitting it in half well Uh, no no the best part of that was uh autobio yes autobio thank you um basically her character grabs like two guns and she does like this weird thing like her body type it yes it can if you like train hard enough you can actually do it but it's like so weird and like it's a she's weird a big she's a bigger lady yeah uh, she's, mm. she's uh so it's a it's the most unrealistic like her and economos are the most unrealistic characters yeah. in this whole thing but i thought both. it was so cute like it was like very artistic because she moves her body a certain way that usually women at that size won't move that way unless they do a lot of intense like training and like yoga which is possible there's a lady who does yoga and she's like bigger 
It says, uh, the action begins to ramp up as Economos is made and nearly killed by the butterflies. They send him in to put this helmet uh, so they can blow up this mm-hmm. facility. And he gets made, and that's when they all attack. Uh, and it says, the action begins to ramp up even more. The sonic boom helmet is appropriately is used appropriately. They use a sonic boom helmet to blow up this facility layer by layer uh, to try and get to this animal, or to get to this cow it says with incredible choreography peacemaker vigilante and harcourt take down dozens of butterflies lots of gun head shots lots of violence all time to the song from the theme song of the show mm-hmm. um it's done really really well uh, there's also a scene I, I skipped over beforehand where he sees his dad and i'm not i i don't know if i missed something but he's he, like he killed his dad in the previous episode but now he's like seeing his dad he's hallucinating he's like hallucinating his mm-hmm. dad and that could be a cut like a deep cut to the comics like i said i'm not familiar with the comic book version of this character he's a pretty obscure character but mm-hmm. that could be something that i'm just not catching from the source material um and then he comes back at the end uh, it says Adebayo decides to stop standing around and goes in guns blazing to save harcourt there's this fantastic scene where she sends um peacemaker in to finish the job and leaves her outside to take on more of these bad guys and she gets shot heavily and there's a fantastic scene a crane shot of her spitting up blood as the camera pans up and it holds it for an uncomfortable Mm -hmm. amount of time it's not they don't cut away from it which normally on network tv they probably Mm -hmm. would have for standards and practices cut away from it because it would have been considered fairly disturbing yeah Um, and then autobio comes along to save her because like butterflies like their thing is they fly into human mouths yeah she pulls the mm-hmm. a butterfly from going in harcourt's mouth uh and then it and says it. so now uh, he gets down there to the basement where this animal is out bio gets down there afterwards and he figures out uh he's alone with goff goff is the one that's uh, inside the body of the female detective sophie, sophie. and it explains and this is it gets so weird it's weird climate change a mask propaganda that's just thrown in there that felt really out of place but it ends up working really well she says uh she's basically they described that the 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 butterflies came to this planet because they destroyed their own planet and now they're taking over human bodies and doing this for us to stop us from doing this to ourselves and she quotes uh it says uh, you, you're listening to populist leaders uh, can, uh, telling you that uh, the hurricanes and the floods are not your own doing. Uh, where you, uh, what was the other quote? The other one that I thought was really funny says, um, you choose freedom, uh, valuing freedom over minor inconveniences. That was very clearly mask propaganda. Yep. And now, the average person who does the type of commentary we're doing is going to ter- be right here and get really annoyed and really angry because it's so blatantly political. Mm-hmm. But the best part here is then he kills her anyways. Even he's though like, she, sorry. He's like, yeah. Um, he, he's like, um, so then they come back to this. So he, he takes the choice that uh, he kills the person even though that's uh, what the people who wrote the show probably agree with her. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at the end, after he kills her and they save the world, he says to Adebayo in the hospital, he says, did I just kill, did I just kill us? Meaning the planet. Mm-hmm. And she goes, maybe you gave us the opportunity to make choices for ourselves. Oh. Now, See, now, that's a solid message. That was fantastic. <laughs> until she then says, maybe you just gave a chance to make our own choices. And then she says, and then he responds, and then she responds with, why? Because of your proto-fascist libertarian Ugh. idea of freedom. I think I zoned I don't out. know what the uh, proto uh, I, I laugh at this because the character of Peacemaker is literally in jail with a government sponsored bomb in his head forced to do the actions of the government crazy libertarian Cra- ideal <laughs> he, he's literally got a bomb in his head that the u.s government has put in there to I control like- his actions and they're calling him a proto-fascist meaning that they're saying that what he's on his way to becoming a fascist even though literally the state controls whether he lives or dies at any moment mm-hmm. i just the message is there I, I so get strange. it, but it's so like surface level. Like, is that how this episode ends with like him in jail with the bomb? No, in his no, head? no, no. That's he. He's allowed to move freely when they put. He's literally told, given tasks where he has to save the world, or else they'll ignite the bomb in your head. 
and that's the people that's crazy uh and then uh and then she also says like, so this is when uh Adebayo decides to out her mom uh her her mother's amanda waller who mm-hmm. runs the suicide squad so uh she's like i'm calling for an investigation which i think is funny because if you really think about that at all it's going to be a typical government investigation where they say we have investigated ourselves and found that we have done nothing wrong mm-hmm. as always would happen if you have any questions please ask us exactly <laughs> exactly um I will say like I can get past that the the weird political language felt out of place for Adebayo mm-hmm. the, the the terminology came out of nowhere but I'm not going to just blatantly cover it as bad and stupid I do think that a lot of the language was dumb but like I said it did come with generally a pro-freedom message mm-hmm. by saying that we're not going to let just, just because you think that you know best for us does not mean give you the right to impose your will on us yeah mm-hmm. there's a lot of irony of the yes. government being like we have to tell you it's you but because you're a fascist yes like, i don't think you understand what fascism is they don't uh so th- that part was hilarious. and i don't want this to become overtly political but the show is making it so mm-hmm. by, by doing this so I, I just love the idea that they they really think that uh, ch- freedom over minor inconveniences which uh, like i said anybody who studied history knows that that's not where any of this ends uh, at, with minor inconveniences so it doesn't need to be as deep as that but at least they saved it for the end also maybe the whole thing is worth it because at the very end of the scene where they finally kill the large cow the Justice League shows up too late yep that's and they're funny. as they're walking out they're missing Batman and he goes he goes yeah, there's no Batman mm-hmm. and they and they have, and it, there's no Henry Cavill it's very clearly like a stand in for Superman well he's but, skinnier too but, but they and actually got Jason Momoa and Ezra Miller to play the Flash and Mom- and uh, and Aquaman and he makes the he makes the sex with fish joke to Aquaman again and Aquaman a- and Jason Momoa actually says I'm so sick of hearing that j- uh, that rumor yeah so and then the Flash is like you know it's not uh, you know it's true that like that part was like that made it worth it like mm-hmm. I can forgive them because actually getting those two and then they actually got Viola Davis to appear for about eight seconds as mm-hmm. Amanda Waller like I'm sure that Momoa Miller and Viola Davis cost like three fourths of the budget yeah. for their eight seconds of screen time between that and the CGI of the monster yeah in general I think this show does uh, it continued to do well what the what James Gunn is good at which is mix uh, sarcasm and dark humor with actual emotional moments mm-hmm. there's a great scene when Economos gets caught and he the they he has to, he's pretending to be one of these butterflies. So he has to act mechanical, like he's one of them, like he's ta- been taken over. Like mm-hmm. this is a body of something that's been taken over. Mm-hmm. And they ask him. They said, in the earlier episodes, we talked about yeah. how Peacemaker would give him crap. He's like, why do you dye your beard like that? Because it's white up here, and then it's brown down here, and it looks very fake. And when they ask it, like when Economos is leaving, they say. Why did the person whose body you take over dye their beard like that? Because when they take over a body, they retain their memories. Yeah. And then he's forced to admit over an intercom system while he knows they can hear him why he does that, which is like, I, he's like, I've never had a girlfriend. Uh, I'm always working. And he basically has to tell this kind of emotionally humiliating story. And the team just looks heartbroken for him because they know that he wouldn't want to admit that he's mm-hmm. only admitting this to save them to keep mm-hmm. themselves from beginning recognized so there's a lot of emotional depth there in a scene that was played for laughs laughs every other time it was brought yeah. up in the show that is solid fantastic writing mm-hmm. what i would love is for him to be able to do the weird political stuff as deeply and as nuanced as he does the deep emotional stuff I think but that's asking a little much mm-hmm. in today's like i would rather he just omit it altogether mm-hmm. but i don't think that's realistic in today's day and age mm-hmm. so if it has to be minimal and at least show somewhat both sides of the story even if you clearly can see what the writer believes i guess that's the best you can hope for yeah but i loved this episode for the most part um and then at the end we get to see his like he's sitting on his uh he waits in the hospital for four days while harcourt is uh recovering Mm -hmm. i I thought for sure we were going to get a peacemaker harcourt sex scene we did not uh they're saving that for season two i'm sure uh, or maybe James Gunn doesn't want him to do that because he's dating that lady in real life. <laughs> he's like, sorry, super Jennifer. Super weird. Um, uh, but in, uh, we're going to get a season two where they, there's a good montage in the out where uh, there's like a weird scene where Adebayo finally gets back to her wife uh, and they have like a really long like Michael Bay 360 shot of them kissing that goes on for like a weirdly mm-hmm. long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it was weird. We get uh, Judo Master mm-hmm. who 
must be like mo- more important in season two because he had almost no role in this. Yeah. He comes back and finds out that all the butterflies are dead. Uh, and then we see, crying. we see, yeah, he starts crying. We see, I wonder if the, him eating like Cheetos was supposed to be like a, a visual trigger that he's not, he was on their side, but wasn't one of them because he's eating human food and the butterflies don't eat human food. They said they can, but it doesn't like but it sustain doesn't, them. Doesn't sustain them. I mean, he just likes it. Maybe he just likes it. You don't it. eat Cheetos for nutrition. You eat them for, I don't know, entertainment. And then there's a fantastic shot where Economos goes back to work at Belrev and mm-hmm. he puts a pi- the picture that they took in like episode four of yeah. everyone in the in the van together rocking out for the first time. Like the first time as a team, they felt like they actually clicked as people. Yeah. Uh, he, he puts that picture on the desktop. That's a great emotional payoff. Yeah. Uh, Vigilante and Peacemaker are then seen blowing up a car acting like children because mm-hmm. they are are just big kids at heart mm-hmm. uh i love it like you forgot the ending scene where like uh him and his dad like he's on the porch yeah uh and then his dad just appears even though his dad's dead in yeah the, in the real world so i thought maybe there was like a, well, i missed something where he got poisoned and i was uh, no, no it's a hallucination because like he still has partial guilt killing his own father and like his father is still in his brain because like he's been wired to like be approved by his did father. He get, did he get like hurt or something that maybe that's causing this? No, no, no. It's just you, supposed to be like a visual representation of guilt? Yeah. Okay. And right. then like you missed the part where like Peacemaker, he's sitting on the porch, but he pours like a little bit of the milk from the cow for Groff because Groff is still alive. Yeah, he's still got the the one butterfly is still alive. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't know if that's going to come into play in season two. I think so because like Groff, like at the end, how yep. you said, said like you showed me that you can actually show mercy and like humankind can actually prevail yep. or some bullshit like yeah, that. Yeah, and then like I've never seen the show so mm-hmm. I have no idea what's going to happen yep. but like if you have like one butterfly that's like turning to be their ally maybe they infiltrate the butterflies next time well whatever. all the other butterflies are dead yeah as far as, as, far we know, as you they're, know. They're, they're, well they're, she groff i mean he's groff is a he my bad because like it was in sophie's song like detective sophie yep. um basically groff said um we tried to come here to like survive and replenish our population but we couldn't because you didn't have our food source. Yeah. So we brought the cow here. And then, yeah, and then like, and you're destroying your planet. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, God. At least it wasn't as heavy-handed. Like, mm-hmm. they, they slip it in at the end. In in the age we live in, it's about as good as you can hope for if they're going to include that type of, like... No, they should, they should just not include it. I have high standards. I agree. Yeah, but same. in a show that had... Uh, Aquaman getting called a fish fucker to his face. I will let it slide. I mean, especially since they got Jason Momoa to actually come in and do that scene. I loved it. I, like I saw it and I was like, no way. I also no love, I love the idea of just the Justice League being late. The, yeah. the, the greatest heroes of all time. They're just like behind schedule. Yeah, uh, I, I love it. And um, also like they didn't mention Batman's not there. Yeah, well, I, like I said, Batman is their most profitable character. They're mm-hmm. not going to, they don't put him on screen unless absolutely I wish like they necessary. wrote something saying like, where's Batman? That would have been good. Mm-hmm. That would have been good. Like Are, Batman's also, like behind. Like, isn't Batman in like an identity crisis? Like who, which actor is the current Batman? They would have, well, mm-hmm. like they had Superman on screen, but they don't actually show and Henry same Cavill. Thing. They could have just I feel put, like Henry Cavill's like been the, like Superman for but a little while. But you don't see him in this scene. It's just a, they obviously it's didn't bring a, him in. They could have just put a generic person in mm-hmm. a Batman suit mm-hmm. and not acknowledged him. Yeah, but same people thing would have with expected, Wonder Woman. Yeah, there's a Wonder Woman's there, but it's clearly not Gal Gadot. It's just a woman. Who yeah, looks like, how they did it. So when the Justice League shows up, they're all in the shadows, but then Jason Momoa and then Ezra Ez- Miller. Ezra Miller. As like, the Flash. Basically, they show their face like with a little bit light, but then Superman and Wonder Woman, they're still in the shadows and they don't say anything. They're still like posing. Like Superman's still floating. He like turns a little bit to look at Peacemaker and then Wonder Woman, she's still holding her shield and lasso truth. Yep. And this is like staring at them while they walk. Notice that they got rid of her sword. They won't let her use the sword. I anymore. thought they had. A, I thought she had the sword for a little bit, but then it disappeared they, after. They after the first Wonder Woman movie, they they got rid of it because we live in an age of incredible, politically stupid people that. Uh, Who's scared of a sword? Yeah, it's yeah, sword. It's the world we live in mm-hmm. now. So Who's scared of that? Very now? stupid. But uh, Adebayo and him coming to terms at the end. I mm-hmm. love that where he says. Uh, after after Eagly, you're my new, you're my BFF. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was that was cute. Uh, he goes, uh, V might think it's him, but it's mm-hmm. you. Um, so uh, 
Harcourt and Chris Bond at the hospital. I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I think mm-hmm. Gunn is fantastic at, at this type of storytelling. Uh, I'm excited for season two. I, I hope it becomes... My hope is that by the time that comes out, they've all got kind of their uh, this out of their system, mm-hmm. and there's none of this other like uh, modern-day... Uh, topical uh, writing in there. Mm-hmm. Like, like I said, he kept it to a minimum. The fact that he wrote this during quarantine and it wasn't heavier handed is actually a testament, I think, to his writing. Is mm-hmm. season two uh, in production right now? Uh, just announced. It's just announced and I really hope like they... Hardcore is like better. Like I hope she like, did fantastic in the scene where she had to like she, the, 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 when she finally did do all the shooting in this one. It was yeah. the first time I found her believable as like a spyish type mm-hmm. person. Well, like for me what i'm hoping for is like they have like the story arc where like it's like five years later and they reunite because Mm -hmm. they need the task force x again and i'm hoping they do a different intro dance they probably they'll probably change it uh next season i really hope they change it and like they bring back judo master because he was actually my favorite character with the hot cheetos he was only in it for like seven seconds it doesn't matter it's still good man right. where's my okay. representation so okay <laughs> hot cheeto representation got it yeah all right um sophia's song doesn't really count for me she, i liked her like, she was great once she actually became one of the butterflies i liked her as a butterfly but as a regular human detective stop trying to clap back with racism yep there was a lot of cl- oh, everybody claps back that's the annoying mm-hmm. part is uh, everyone stop doesn't. clapping back yes. we don't care just uh, let the stupid people be stupid and ignore them i say so overall you'd say you recommend to people if they haven't seen it um i recommend it to my friend this morning because i was watching the last episode yep. while like working and it like it might even be better if you get to watch all the episodes at once mm-hmm. yeah but for him he's also agrees he doesn't like John Cena, so he won't support it because of John Cena. I th- th- it's like one of these things where people have to you have to really learn to separate like, the separate artist. art from artist mm-hmm. if you like, especially doing what we do now on the show. I mm-hmm. don't think that you have to. I mean, if you don't like an actor or an actress, like maybe you guys do for your job, but like if I don't like an actor or an actress or for whatever reason, just like if I don't care for a company's policies, like I'm not going to patron them. This mm-hmm. is why I tend to t- uh, I take the ignorance is bliss approach on a lot of it like i i just like to hate watch she, see i don't i don't hate watch this thing like for me like i, I take the uh, ignorance is bliss approach means if i don't go looking up their social media and i don't have to sit there and think about what they say about mm-hmm. politics then i can ignore it and watch the, and judge their art based on how the mm-hmm. art is yeah and do that to the best of my abilities i'm not saying that's the strategy everyone needs to employ i'm saying that's the that's the approach I take. I think there's a mm-hmm. blend, right? Like, I don't, I don't go out of my way to check actors, actors, Instagram. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I'm not interested in it. But like, if you know already that you, like, if you have heard a statement or something you don't agree with, it's like, harder. I also think it's fair to be like, well, I'm gonna give this one a pass because I don't really care for that person. Or mm-hmm. you give the, you give your judgment of whatever the product is, and you and you acknowledge beforehand, say, look, I have strong opinions about this person. It may color my opinion of this product, sure. mm-hmm. of this product, and you just be open in in forefront about the fact that you know what they've said in the past bothered me. So if well it, for you guys, like it's yeah. worth acknowledging that yeah. you yes. don't like an actor, but like for the average consumer who doesn't have to then publicly then, review things, then like yeah, pass. Like who cares? Yep. Yeah, vote with your wallet. Yeah, exactly. Well, like for me, like Brett makes fun of me because I'm ambivalent with half of Hollywood. Like I either really hate them or I'm meh. Like, mm-hmm. I can live without them. Well, I don't love anyone in Hollywood. That's freaking weird. In fact, celebrity worship is amongst the strangest things in it the entire world weird. to me. It is weird. But in general, I try to be as neutral as possible mm-hmm. when doing this stuff otherwise. Or at least if I do have strong opinions, make it known to people so that they can factor that into their, uh, how, how they weigh my review or my mm-hmm. interpretation of something. Sure. Which seems like the the mature way to go about that, I yeah. guess. So. I'm just so happy that they got Jason Momoa. And I, I, was like, I knew Miracle would be very, she's like, she's going to give it a 10 now because it's got Jason Momoa in it. I know. Best episode ever. <laughs> Mir- Acknowledging that his character does not have sex with fish. Oh, we don't know that for sure. Uh, well, as Ramilla says, uh, the Flash says it might be true. So Who Yeah, knows? and also the boys made fun of that character too where he actually does. He's too good looking, man. Mm-hmm. He's too good looking. What is going on, everybody? It is episode 58 of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is here with my co-host, Intro-